dear pure urology uh, facebook viewers uh, good evening one and all from india and uh, today topic is related to this stone that is related to pcnl and uh, pcnl supracostal puncture as you all know in prone pcnl upper calyx is the suitable calyx to reach all the calyces multiple stones staghorn calliculus inferior calyx plus pelvic stone plus upper calycial stone this is the approach lot of the senior urologists prefer but upper pole puncture has its own complications problems like usually they go above 12th rib if they go about 10th rib uh, 11th rib pleura can and lung can get injured the upper pole artery is main artery at the upper pole infundibulum can get injured you have to go little vertically with bullseye technique sometimes lateral calyx can be punctured no anterior posterior calyx see um, uh, in bullseye the needle may come in the picture there are many problems so that is the reason why we selected this topic uh, today's speaker is dr mohammad alshli he is the professor uh, from the egypt uh, good evening uh, dr mohammad alshli good evening dr chandra thank you very I, much for this chance i will i will officially introduce first i will ask you few questions who yes. is your uh, who is your mentor in urology uh, my mentor in urology uh, is it Dr. Uh, Dr. Iraqi is uh, was a teacher in laparoscopy, one of the pioneers in laparoscopy and endurology. I stayed with him around four years. I have uh, he was my supervisor in my thesis in in Mansoura. I have a lot of uh, uh, good deeds to teach other uh, uh, university hospitals in Egypt. Dr. Ibrahim Iraqi. So, uh, when did you develop interest uh, in uh, endourology, stone surgery? At what point of your career you developed interest? Uh, I started uh, to do laparoscopy mainly, but with uh, the uh, burden of problem of stones uh, in Egypt. Uh, so, I took more and more interest in uh, doing stones, PCNL, and after that, doing now repairs because of the health problem of stones here is very big. How many urologists are there in Egypt, roughly? Roughly around 3,000 urologists. Uh, officially, I think we have in the society around 1,800, but uh, I think the number is around 3,000. 3, that's, that's, that's a big number. Do, do your yeah. annual conferences happen uh, every year? Yeah, we have uh, in December every year, we have the annual uh, conference of the Egyptian Urological Society. Okay. So I, I must thank you for accepting. I have seen your CV. I will read that CV now. Uh, the Dr. Uh, Dr. Bahamad Elshley is a professor of urology, urology department, Menofia University Hospital, Egypt, secretary of endourology section, Egyptian Urology Association since 2017. Areas of interest are endourology, laparoscopic urology, and reconstructive urology. Supervised more than 20 theses in last five years at Menofia University. Editorial board member in Gavin Journal of Urology and Renal Diseases. Ellen's Journal of Urology, Annals of Urology Research. He has more than 61 publications in his international journals, in many international journals. Reviewer in the following international journals, Urology Internationalist, Clinical Urology, BOWS, African Journal of Urology, Case Reports in Urology, International Journal of Urology. I, I am very happy that uh, he is the first speaker from Egyptian country where 3,000 urologists are there, where stone work is common both for Indian subcontinents and Egyptian. Let us listen, supracostal puncture tips and uh, avoiding the problems from Dr. Mohammed Elshli. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chandra, for this uh, introduction and for the chance to present my work on uh, your platform. I will start uh, sharing my slides. Yeah. Uh, my topic today will be so, supracostal. It's not shared. 
It's not Tell. sharing. Okay. You have to yes. share the screen below. Below, yes. you have to share the screen. The share the screen button is there below. Yeah, just a second. Just roll the button, it will show below. Share the screen. Just touch it in the yellow color below, it will come. Share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, great. And now you can share. Okay, just a second. Your presentation. Uh, yeah, it is there. Yeah, just the hidden from my lab. I just. Uh... Yeah, that okay. is. Okay. Yes, yes. Enlarge the screen. Supracostal. My topic today will be yes. supracostal BCNL safety and points of technique. Uh, an agenda of my presentation will cover the anatomic considerations, technique of safe supracostal puncture indications, advantages, and complications. And finally, I'll give the take home messages from my presentations. Uh, the stone clearance and the improved patient outcome in percutaneous nephrolithotomy are largely, uh, are largely uh, dependent on the appropriate selection of the access to the kidney. While standard BCNL is often performed through the historical standard subcostal lower calcial approach, upper calcial access through a supracostal approach can be ideal for many clinical situations. Traditionally, concerns for increased potential preoperative complications, especially the thoracic complications, have limited the utilization of the supracostal axis, and still many urologists just to do lower calcial puncture, and if they need to do supracostal, they abort or avoid this for the avoiding of the risk of complication. However, with good understanding of the anatomy and with attention to a few technical consideration during the procedure, upper calcial access through a supracostal approach can be performed safely and efficiently. Uh, we come to question, what are the indications to do supracostal puncture? Mainly uh, in staghorn stones with complex stones, many surgeons prefer to go uh, to the upper calyx with good access to the rest of stones and have some publication on, on this. In cases of complex lower pole stones at the upper calyx can give access to both anterior and the posterior complex lower stones. In horseshoe kidney, uh, sometimes we need supracostal. If the kidney is high, if the kidney is low, we, we don't need supracostal. Uh, in cases with large upper pool stone burden, uh, if we want to do anti-grade endobilotomy in urethropelvic junction obstruction, we'll give good access to the OBJ. Uh, also, in cases of uh, proximal uh, silent impacted ureter ureteral stone or proximal impacted ureteral stone, now many endurologists go uh, happy to go uh, anti-grade, not retrograde, to avoid the edema and to avoid the migration of stone with some good results on this technique. In cases of upper pool calicial diverticulum, and sometimes if we do PCNL uh, through a lower or middle calicial stone and stones migrated to the upper calyx, uh, it happens uh, and we need to go to the upper uh, calicial puncture or the supracostal puncture to control this migrated stone. This is in summary, uh, the, the, the main indication to do supracostal puncture. The advantages of doing supracostal puncture, it gives good access to the upper calyx, it gives access to the UBG, it gives access to the complex lower calyx. Uh, it attains less torque on the kidney than the lower calicial puncture. And usually the, the access puncture technique to the upper calyx is easier than the lower calyx, simply because the, the way is short uh, and the straight to the upper calyx. However, the lower calyx is usually oblique and long course, so the triangulation and pulse eye is usually easier if we do access to the upper calyx. Now we study some anatomic consideration to understand the problems with the uh, sopra, uh, sopra, calyx, sopra costal puncture. 
The posterior diaphragm arises from the distal ends of the 11th and 12th rib, the tip of the first lumbar transverse process and the anterior aspect of the upper lumbar vertebral body. During full inspiration, the posterior inferior margin of the lung expands to fill the posterior costophrenic recess. However, during expiration, the lung retracts upward and the pleura ascend cranially and laterally on the ribs, allowing safe window to do puncture during expiration. The lower limit of the posterior parietal pleura crosses the 12th rib obliquely near the lateral border of the erectrospiny muscle. In the mid scapular line, the visceral pleura has a similar relationship at the 10th rib. Here we can see. Uh, the window above the 11th rib is, is still risky and they can have pleural injury. However, the lateral half of the last space uh, above the 12th rib is safe, especially during expiration. This is very important anatomic landmark uh, to allow safe puncture uh, during supracostal uh, BCNL without high risk of pleural injury. The initial needle puncture for the supra 12 rib axis is advocated at maximal expiration and the lateral to the erectrospiny muscles in the uh, either in the 11th or 12th interspace to avoid lung and the pleural injury. However, the risk in the above the 11th is, is higher than the risk above the 12th. So the high risk area is the medial part, especially above 11 and above. The low risk area is the lateral half, especially in the last space only. We can do access techniques, either fluoroscopic guided or ultrasonic guided, uh, using different techniques, either monoplanar freehand, which is easier in expert hands, but sometimes difficult to teach resident and not that reproducible. I prefer to do triangulation or biplanar uh, as it is easy, standardized, and easy to teach resident. We can do bull's eye, especially in upper and middle calyx. We can do a retrograde approach in some centers and endoscopic guided approach. But the most popular, the first three, the freehand triangulation and bull's eye. The ideal axis should avoid para-infundibular or tangential axis, should go uh, anatomically transpapillary to avoid the risk of bleeding. To av we should avoid calycial transfixation or calycial tear. And we should stop at the calyx and not to dilate the infundibulum to avoid the injury, the mucosal injury and the bleeding. This is the standard uh, axis. However, in the last few years, we saw some publication on uh, to challenge the wisdom of the anatomic puncture by a, a group from Greece to do some non papillary or non anatomic puncture and be, be showed some good results. However, most of the endurologists. Uh, still uh, sticking with the standard transpapillary approach to avoid the risk of bleeding. And we can see here the renal vascular anatomy showing the dangerous to go uh, non-anatomical puncture. And in the famous uh, landmark studies by Sampaio uh, to study the relation of the interlobar arteries to the calices, they showed that the risk of uh, the bleeding especially in the upper calyx, if we don't go anatomical and we do infundibular puncture, the risk is maybe up to two thirds of cases may have bleeding. And sometimes if we go direct to the pelvis, direct pelvic puncture, uh, as uh, some uh, studies recently uh, advocated, maybe one third of cases will have bleeding. So uh, the non calycial or non papillary puncture is considered by many endurologists as a step in the wrong direction. And we should stick with the anatomic uh, studies that prove the papillary or the trans papillary puncture. Regarding uh, this is introduction is very important because some uh, criticize the supracostal puncture for going non anatomical. Uh, we actually have two variants of the supracostal puncture. Uh, we have uh, some good discussion in Twitter last month with some good friends from India. Uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Parimal Garia. Just send me this uh, this image. We uh, can consider the supracostal puncture two different types. We can consider one intercostal puncture, the lateral one, the lateral puncture. This is the intercostal puncture, and and the supracostal vertical one. Both are supracostal, but one the intercostal one go laterally from the lateral half of the uh, space, 
perpendicular on the calyx. After puncture, we change the direction of amblets downward to access the pelvis if we want, but it doesn't go transpapillary at the supracostal puncture. The problem of the vertical one, it will need to go medially and from above may have higher risk of uh, pleural injury, but the lateral one will be safe uh, and avoid uh, going medially with the pleural injury. So we can subdivide the supracostal into lateral and vertical. Uh, this is an image of uh, supracostal uh, puncture or the lateral intercostal puncture with clearing most of the stones uh, done also during expiration, full expiration with mostly I have one pleural injury in the last six, uh, six years, maybe sticking with the rule to do the puncture during expiration in the lateral half of the last space make the uh, possibility of pleural injury very little. The exit strategy, uh, strategy as usual may be standard or maybe tubeless still in Egypt, we, we are not uh, doing much cases of tubeless. I know my friends in India doing many tubeless now, uh, maybe uh, willing to change practice in uh, non-eventful cases to do tubeless or what's known as maxi PCNL, uh, as uh, reported by uh, Achler in 2019. Maxi is supracostal without uh, nephrostomy tube. At the end of the procedure, we do fluoroscopy in after supracostal puncture uh, over the ipsilateral chest and lung fields to exclude the presence of hydrothorax. In the operating room, a big tail catheter is inserted into the chest under fluoroscopic guidance in patients noted to have significant hydrothorax or pleural diffusion. Uh, if patients are symptomatic or there, there is concern for hydrothorax in the post-operative period after um, the operation, uh, we should do a bright chest X-ray in the recovery room with monitoring the clinical respiratory vital signs. A patient with symptomatic collection should be managed by tube thoracostomy. Uh, some uh, advised alternative technique to avoid the risk of supracostal puncture and pleural injury. This is mainly what's known as displacement technique. We can do uh, lower calicial puncture and do some, uh, uh, some traction uh, or displacement of the kidney downward to allow uh, access of the upper pool uh, through a subcostal uh, access, not through supracostal access either by the wire and through and through, or by pressing on the sheath downward and access the upper calyx through subcostal puncture. This is what's known as renal displacement. Uh, now we come to a question, can we do supine supracostal or supracostal is only uh, done in prone position? I do it in, in uh, prone position main, uh, personally, but some publication do it supine supracostal puncture as what well in 2017. And, and it is, uh, he, he compared uh, two groups, 28 supine and 104 prone and concluded that the supracostal puncture safe and feasible in supine also, it doesn't add additional risk and might provide equivalent success rate compared to prone BCNL. But in my practice, most of the, B, of the supine BCNL can allow access to the upper calyx because the angle is easier in supine than prone. So most of the supine surgeon, I think, don't need uh, to do supracostal because the angle allowed them to go to the upper calyx if the stone is migrated easier than uh, that in, in, in prone. The angle in prone is difficult if it's too migrated from the pelvis to the upper and need to do supracostal puncture. In subine, the angle is easier. That's why it is not popular in subine to do supracostal puncture. However, it uh, can be done. The outcome of supracostal access in different series was good stone free rate uh, ranging from 70 to 90%. This is a meta-analysis, systemic review and the meta-analysis done in 2019, comparing the different series of uh, supracostal puncture. And they concluded that the supracostal is effective uh, and safe as the subcostal puncture, however, with higher uh, incidence of complication, mainly the hydrosolic, hydrothorax and the, in some series bleeding. The overall complication in supracostal axis ranging from 10 to uh, 26%, mainly the pulmonary complication that's reported from one to 15% of different series. 
In Supra 11th uh, rib axis, in particular, the associated with increased uh, chance of thoracic complication. In one series, uh, it was 23% if we go above 11. And the incidence is just 1% if we stick with, uh, in the last space above 12%. So it's very important if you are afraid to go uh, supracostal, stick with the lateral half of the last space. <clears throat> Hydrothorax is the most common pleural injury in the Clinical Research Office of Endurology Society. They reported also that going above 11 has five to six times higher rate of pleural injury than if we go above 12. Further tips in supracostal, we should after that do proper position of the ambulance cheese to avoid leakage, should maintain low pressure system, and should have adequate renal drainage postoperatively. Hemothorax also can occur if the needle hit the vessel. Uh, diagnosis can be done uh, intraoperative or postoperative. And do, if we suspect, we should do prone fluoroscopy in the epsilateral lung field after finishing the operation. Uh, if uh, we found this significant fluid, we should do aspiration or thoracostomy conducted to underwater. Uh, what about other organ injuries uh, in supracostal? It is less common uh, than pulmonary complication, uh, but however, however, the liver, spleen, and the intestinal or colonic injury may occur rarely during upper calcial function. A retrorenal uh, colon or, uh, occurring in 10% of patients in the prone position uh, may, be, may prohibit access to the 10th or 11th intercostal space with increased risk associated with medial function. Uh, usually, I, I used to teach my resident to have a good planning in the pre-operative uh, CT axial cuts uh, because uh, sometimes we found in the uh, supracostal uh, cuts that colon is closed, liver is closed, spleen is closed. So this is unsafe window and we decide before the operation will not go supracostal. This is very important plan to study the axial cuts pre-operatively to see the safe window uh, and sometimes we decide not to go uh, in this unsafe window. <clears throat> Additionally, sopra 11 uh, axis could puncture the liver in 14% and spleen in one third of cases if puncture done during uh, inspiration. So again, as I just said, pre-operative planning of the axis is very important, important, and we should not forget this safe and unsafe windows during the puncture. And sometimes we use the ultrasonic guided axis if we suspect organomegaly or there is difficult access. This is image showing in the supracostal spaces, the colon was closed and the puncture hits the colon causing colonic injury. This is also showing how spleen can be punctured supracostally if not cautious and not study the preoperative axial cuts thoroughly. Uh, regarding the post-operative pain, some series uh, said that supracostal axis may have increased discomfort compared to the subcostal approaches. Uh, we should stick in to the middle of the intercostal space, avoid uh, accessing the inferior border of 11th rib to, uh, to minimize the injury to the intercostal nerves and vessels. Uh, needle puncture and disease manipulation along the superior border of 12th rib may result in increased periostal irritation and post-operative pain. Some use intercostal nerve block, and sometimes it is advised to use a small pore tube or tubeless to avoid this discomfort. Tubeless uh, supracostal uh, is, uh, can be done if there is non-eventful operation, no residuals, no perforation, no bleeding, no pleural injuries, and uh, no, not suitable to strovite or infected stones. And uh, now we come to a question, can we do supracostal in children or in uh, pediatric population? We have some answers from literature that can be done in pediatric supracostal puncture, uh, safe and effective in pediatric age population. We may ask Dr. Chandra about uh, his experience in pediatric uh, stones about doing supracostal af after the lecture. And uh, now the trend uh, in the last few years uh, going doing more supracostal or less. I think they were doing less supracostal puncture uh, because simply because uh, now retrograde intrarenal surgeries 
competing with BCNL for difficult scenarios as the upper pool, puncture, upper pool stones can be accessed by retrograde endoscopic renal surgery. Also, the endoscopic combined subine so with, uh, with the rails it can also um, uh, avoid doing supracostal in multiple calicial stones. We simply can do middle or lower calyx, and if it's still upper calicial residual, can be managed by the flexible. So flexible and rears taking part of the work of the PCNL, especially in medium-sized stone and the complex stone. Uh, so I think the use of multiple track and the use of supracostal uh, puncture is less in the last few years, especially in the centers with availability of retrograde intrarenal surgery. Uh, th this case I did last month, for example, was a stone in the upper calyx. Uh, the axis in the preoperative axial cuts showing uh, not uh, very, very narrow window be uh, between the liver uh, and the muscles. So I prefer to do uh, rares in this case and with successful results in around one hour operation with good results. Uh, this is example of some cases that uh, no need, we can do alternative technique to supracostal if we have rares. Uh, finally, my take home messages, uh, supracostal uh, percutaneous access to the upper pool of the kidney during PCNL is a useful technique when indicated. Uh, Sobra 12 rib puncture should be approached lateral to the rectospiny muscle during maximal expiration. Sobra costal axis above 11th rib should be avoided when possible or done cautiously due to the increased risk of pleural injury. Uh, intraoperative fluoroscopy of the lung field should be performed at the end of a procedure. A strong suspicion of the pulmonary injuries should be maintained in the post-operative period. Uh, with attention given to the anatomic consideration, supracostal access to the upper pool can be obtained safely and efficiently to contribute to successful percutaneous renal surgery. Endoscopic combined intrarenal surgery and use of flexible scopes in conjunction with BCNL is gaining more and more popularity with less use of supracostal puncture. Thank you very much. An excellent talk, I must say. You are so crisp. You are very, very crisp. It will be this talk will be very useful for the PGs who are going for the exam. It's one go, you can just read and then go right. Fantastic. I must tell you, you're really crisp. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Parmil has joined. Uh, you mentioned his name. I have taken a picture of that. I'm happy. Uh, that picture is very, very good. He has written nicely. Uh, this to be avoided, this to be taken, lateral puncture, below uh, 11th, 12th approach, not below the 12th, it will be too much oblique. And a uh, lot of your fans, uh, Chalak Sidi Mohammed from uh, Algeria, I have uh, traffic from, uh, uh, I think, uh, Egypt and Maher Ali Adi from Baghdad, uh, Ahmad Jair, Mohammed Abu Jid uh, said, great proper presentation, professor, and I love Terrific. They all appreciated you. More than 150 have joined in a short, short period of time. To be honest, this link will be there even after the presentation. Same link will be there on the YouTube. Yeah. I wanted to ask quickly 10 questions. Yeah. Five. Uh, in Stone's uh, Staghorn, initial puncture if the entire kidney is filled with stone. Do you do first puncture priority inferior calyx or superior calyx? Entire kidney is filled with stone. Yeah. Uh, starting my career I was subcostal uh, lower calyx mainly, but with more and more experience, I prefer to go middle calyx, my favorite my favorite calyx, but uh, it depends on, on the anatomy. You know, the pelvic cell system is like fingerprint. Every case has its uh, special configuration. Yeah. So I'm not fanatic to, to, uh, to one calyx. Uh, it depends on the anatomy, the trajectory, which one will give me the best access to the burden, to the pelvis. Uh, this is, uh, but mainly from experience, middle usually good, better maneuverability. A lot of the senior surgeons in the prefer middle calyx because you can mm. go half up, half down, yeah. say infracostal, and you can yeah. sweep off everything. 
Yeah, maneuverability can access both yeah, lower and lower. Maneuverability is very good. The Chinese technique uh, from Nepal, um, uh, um, everybody does middle calicial puncture. My second question, uh, there is a controversy of puncture during supine during prone PCNL supracostal, whether to take deep inspiration or not. For example, if inspiration, kidney will come down, but pleura also will come down. Yeah. So in expiration, pleura will go up, but kidney also may be going up. Yeah. How, do you, how do you address which is safe? You already mentioned expiration is better. But do you think that with expiration, the upper calicial anatomy goes way above? No. If it is very high uh, to access, I will not stick with this. Especially if, if I am in the lateral half of the last space, it doesn't matter. The chance of pleural injury is very little, less than 1% mostly. Uh, this is of concern if I am uh, above 11. So if the direction is difficult and I, I need the kidney to go down, I'll not stick with the rule of expansion. I'll stick with it if it is high or above 11. Third question. If upper calyx has a large system with the calicial anatomy not facing laterally, yeah. something superiorly, yeah. but dilated system with the stone, yeah. you don't mind puncturing the lateral part of the calyx, yeah. not calyx, lateral part of the system, PCS. Yeah. It, it looks safe. You mentioned already one article that in a dilated system with a large stone, if you go laterally, very safe in a supracostal puncture. Yeah. If you wanted to go only calyx, you may go above 11th rib also, that too yeah. vertically, or bullseye vertical track. Instead yeah. of that, come laterally, the flat surface of the kidney where vessels will not be there. What is your comment on that? Yeah, this is a situation we, we, saw, we, re, we rarely face uh, to have a big burden with medial calyx. It is not common, actually, but uh, it happens. And if it happens, I'll go vertical. Vertical balls eye to the stone puncher with a known risk that we may have some pleural injury. We'll consider this, but it, it is risky. Need experience, need direct puncture, ver vertical direct puncture, more, mostly with balls eye. Okay. It, is, it is possible, but... I got Needs a learning curve, yeah. And uh, a fifth question. If uh, the maneuverability of uh, upper calyx to the lower calyx, your experience yeah. uh, generally is very good or uh, sometimes you may not get it. What is your experience? Usually by logic, it's very good. Yeah. What is your experience of a, a stone in the lower calyx picked up by the upper calicial puncture? Uh, it depends on the pelvic calicial anatomy. In most of cases, it gives good access and maneuverability to the complex lower calyx and middle from the upper. But sometimes with long infantibulum and distorted calicial anatomy, it may not be uh, easy uh, to reach. In this case, we, we may need multiple tracks. It depends sixth, on the population. Yeah. My sixth question, what are the common instruments you use in PCNL being experienced surgeon? Number yeah. one, mini nephroscope, what size you use, what company you use? Uh, unfortunately, now we don't have uh, a lot of uh, a mini perk in my uh, in my university hospital. Hoping to to have it uh, soon, so we still we we use the standard in my uh, hospital. We don't have mini. Sometimes we dilate uh, to sixteen French and to go with the with the flexible scope with with the semi rigid ultrascope. But actually, this uh, year we don't have mini perk. Stop. What is the standard? What is the standard nephroscope you use in PCNL? The uh, the size is twenty six or thirty French. This is the standard we use. Carlos stones. Okay. And uh, uh, what, what 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 type of dilatation you use? Alkene dilatation or uh, the sequent the single step dilatation? What, what is the dilatation technique you use? <laughs> I'm still conservative man with the with the telescopic alkan. Still, I like it. In my even my I also like it. 
my residents or junior, most of them shifted to single step now, but I am still, I'm still safe. A few minutes more, but I, I feel safe. I, I also feel uh, slightly safe. safer with yeah. Alkin. My junior consultants who have learned PCL from me, they have switched to... Uh, yeah, most of people now switch to single step. I am I'm still doing the telescopic method now. Are you ever using a laser as lithotripter in PCNL surgery? Yes or no? Only pneumatic. We use pneumatic and uh, ultrasonic, but uh, rarely laser. Rarely laser. In, in, in very select situation when uh, angle is difficult, we cannot go uh, easily. We can use laser uh, and deflexi during PCNL. But, uh, but the standard is pneumatic and ultrasonic. What is the uh, what is the incidence of and do you have angioembolization facility? Yeah, we have a available. Yeah, yeah, available. We have uh, uh, good interventional radiology in our university hospital accessible to us. In the last six years, uh, we had two cases of embolization, two cases of angioembolization done uh, easily and controlled after that. Okay. Uh... Are you practicing ECIRS? Uh, we started to practice ECIRS, yes, but not too much work. I just supervised the thesis comparing the prone in, uh, in complex uh, stones with, uh, with sobine and the endoscopic combined. We started this work uh, recently, but still the results are going. If there is hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, what are the tips and tricks? Will you go more lateral? Will you go more inferior? Will you go landmark what? After reading the axial cut, if the epitomely uh, spinomely is present, how do you plan your supracostal puncture? I plan it uh, through study preoperatively of the axial cuts to determine the safe window, uh, supracostal, subcostal, medial, or lateral. In suspected cases, we can use ultrasonic guided to avoid the organomegaly. Okay. Have you ever tried this uh, uh, another approach where you told uh, uh, lower calyx you puncture, bring it down and then do it? Have you ever tried? That's cumbersome actually. Tried it once, maybe a few years back, but I think I don't. We don't need it. Gaining more and more experience, uh, I think it is not uh, not popular now. Yeah, I, I I as you mentioned, pediatric PCL. I do RIRS and pediatric PCLs yeah. both. Yeah, uh, supracostal. I have done above the 12th rib, but definitely not above the 11th rib because we are also afraid of morbidity of pleura and lung injury in children. So, so horizontal puncture, a lateral to the erector spinae, uh, preferably after reading the axial cuts of the CT very well. Uh, but usually the kidney will be very, very superficial. Yes. You can, you, you will get within two centimeters the calyx. Uh, if it is dilated, it is easy. If it is not dilated, slightly tricky. That's what my comment. And uh, extravasation is very common. Dilute contrast to be injected. Uh, I, I slightly prefer a little inspiration to get the kidney because the mobility of the kidney in infants and children is very good. And yes. slightly I will do error on the inspiration. That was the answer for me because we do a lot of uh, uh, infant and uh, less than five years children. Yes. The last couple of questions. Do you reserve blood before uh, PCNL? Do you arrange blood? Yeah, I, I make sure it is available. I don't uh, reserve or book it. I just make sure uh, in the bank that the uh, blood group is, is uh, available. Uh, actually, with getting more and more experience, the need of transfusion is much less in the last few years. Uh, maybe less than 1% or 2% uh, two, two maybe. Not... 10% as before. We have in Mansoura series, uh, last few years, it was up to 10%, but I think now the actual number, is, uh, incidence is less. Last question. Uh, the most of the patients are on aspirin clopidogrel. Yeah. In PCNL, they are dangerous to do directly. Yes. Uh, what's your take? Are you stopping them a week before like any other? Yes, I stopped five days before. Five days before. Yeah. Uh, no question of trying on low dose aspirin in high risk patients. No, no, no. <laughs> it's risky. Yeah. It's no. risky. Yeah. So thank you very much for your nice crisp presentation. I I told that 
uh, this presentation, if any junior click supracostal puncture PCNL, this is very crisp, 20 minutes, uh, crisply covered. You can write nice, uh, same, repeat, and get good marks for PG in the final year. If you listen, they, if they listen to your talk. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, we will try to take uh, the uh, Egyptian urologists, uh, if you suggest uh, uh, your friends who are doing good work in laparoscopy, uh, RIRS, uh, we love to get interacted so that the audience juniors will get benefited. Thank you sure. very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chandra. Thank you. Total nearly 200 audience have listened to your talk. You have a lot of following in Egypt. I wish you all the best, Professor.